This audio is brought to you by Muslim Central. Please consider donating to help cover our running costs and future projects by visiting www.muslimcentral.com forward slash donate. Assalamu alaikum. This is Yasmin Mujahid, and you're listening to Serenity, streaming live on One Legacy Radio. Uh, today I wanted to talk about a topic which I think is something that a lot of us think about, a lot of us hope for, and sometimes we don't really know how to achieve. And that's the goal of change. Uh, we think a lot of times about things in our own lives or things in our own selves that we wish could be different. We wish that we could uh, achieve a certain goal uh, f- that we that we sort of idealize in our mind, but we don't really know how to get there. And we don't really know, uh, usually what happens is our mind sort of plays tricks on us, or, or rather one could say that the nefs uh, or shaitan plays tricks on us. And what one of those tricks that is played on us is that the goal is made to seem very, very far away. So, for example, suppose that I I live a life which is distant from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. I live a life which is is far from Him and 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 far from His Deen. And I'm not really practicing in the way that I really wish I could, in the way that I and I, that I ought to. And so, what will happen is. Uh, as an obstacle that I really create for my own self, I'll see it as too difficult to change. I'll, I'll think that, yeah, I wish that I could be a better Muslim. I wish that I could have Allah in my life. I wish that I could be close to Allah, but it's too hard. It's too, that, that goal is just too far away. And so the distance from that goal, the, the way that, that that distance appears to me makes me uh, basically becomes a barrier from me achieving or even taking any steps towards that goal. And the reason why this is actually a deception is this, and this is what, inshallah, I will talk about uh, for today's show, is is breaking down this, basically this trick, this deception of shaitan and of the nafs, that that this goal of change, this goal is of, of for example, reaching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or, or changing my life uh, is, is made to seem so far away and why that's actually a deception. So people, a lot of times uh, they live, you know, we, we live our lives in a certain way and sometimes we get stuck in certain habits. We, we get stuck in a, in a certain uh, sort of momentum of our life just because that's the way it's always been and just because that's what's familiar and just because that's what we're used to. And we're afraid to make a change. We're afraid of, of something else, even if it's something better just because it's different. And, and a lot of times we are afraid, literally we are afraid of change. And, and what we have to do is overcome this fear of, of what, of change because the truth is that as human beings going through this life, if we are not constantly striving and constantly transforming and constantly changing for the better, we are by default uh, changing for the worst. So any time that we think that we're sort of standing still, see, there's no steady state in this life. There's nothing that stands still. And so if really if we find ourselves in a point at a point in our life where we just sort of feel stagnant, we, we have, we're not progressing, we're not growing, we're not developing, we're not transforming and, and we're just sort of standing still, then we can know for sure that we're actually declining. We're actually going down because there is no steady st- standstill. And if you're not going upwards, you're going downwards. So what we have to do is make it, you know, we have to transform our whole idea of what is, what is, um, how should my life really be? How should my progress be? What should it look like? And what we have to understand is that life, in order to be going upwards, in order to be going in the direction that we want to be going towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and towards the hereafter, we need to be constantly working on ourselves. We need to be constantly growing and struggling in that in that path if we get to a point in our life where we just sort of feel comfortable um we sort of you know it's that sit that kick back sit down relax i'm okay then you know at that point that you're on your way down because that's a point where a believer should never reach where you just feel satisfied with with 
and, and, and when I say satisfied, I don't, I don't mean satisfied with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. Of course, we feel satisfied with our lot in the sense of, um, you know, what color my skin is and, you know, what, what race I was born with and, and the things in our life, which, uh, born in, I'm sorry, the things in our life which we cannot control, those things we should be satisfied with because they're from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in the realm of the things that we can control, in the realm of the things which we are going to be held accountable about, in the realm of our actions, in the realm of our the condition of our heart, in the condition of our soul, in that realm, we should never get to a point where we're satisfied. We should never get to a point where we think, okay, my heart is okay. Um, I've my soul, you know, I'm good. I'm good. I've reached that point and I'm, I'm the, I'm the best Muslim that I can be or that I should be and I don't need to strive anymore. That is a very, very dangerous place to be. And in fact, it's indicative of the fact that we are in fact going the opposite direction and we're not where we want to be. So one, one thing we have to keep in mind, the, the, the first lesson is that the, the, the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs to be a path of change. It needs to be a path of transformation, not a path of standing still. Because the moment that you stand still, know that you're going in the decline. You're going down. Um, <clears throat> the second deception that we need to break, and I will inshallah get into more into detail when we return from the commercial. The second um uh, re- return from the break. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> um, the second lesson that we really need to understand and the and deception that we have to break is the idea that our goals are so far away and they're too far for me to reach. So inshallah, we'll go ahead and take that break right now. And when we return, we'll talk about how to break that deception and really take the first steps towards change. This is Yasmin Mujahid, and you're listening to Serenity, streaming live on One Legacy Radio. Uh, we're speaking today about the the topic of change and and what it means to uh, to make a change in our lives, to make a change internally, and therefore um, to make a change externally. And and when we talk about change, one really important principle uh, that we need to keep in mind is that. Uh, a lot of us uh, have situations in our life that we wish could be different. We have situations where we're not maybe satisfied with the way our, um, you know, maybe the way that our, our job is or the way our relationships are or the way that we interact with the world. And, and, and what we, what we will find is that a lot of times when we're looking for the cause of the problem in those situations that we don't like or that we wish could be different, we look for the problem in the wrong place. And what I mean by that is oftentimes when we're trying to diagnose a problem and therefore look for a solution, we tend to look at the problem externally. We tend to look at the problem outside and and try to figure out, okay, if I have a problem with a colleague at work, well, what is that colleague doing wrong? And I sit and I stay up at all night and I, and I, and I lose, I lose sleep and I, and I sit and I, and I'm, and I spend my mental energy trying to make a list of all the things that that colleague is doing wrong or, or that friend is doing wrong towards me. And, and I'm trying, and what I'm doing in this way is I'm trying to find and ascertain the problem and therefore the solution externally i'm looking externally to find the problem and the the um the challenge with this is that if i do that i will never actually find the true problem and i will never actually find the true solution because the problems in our life and the things that that in our lives that we don't we don't like um you know oftentimes we don't realize that in order to change to make a change externally the change needs to begin internally and and one of the ayat that I absolutely love and, and has really um, this concept has really transformed my own life personally um, is that the ayat that Allah subhanahu wa taala says 
um, that Allah will never change the condition of a people until they first change what is inside themselves. Inna Allah la yughayru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayru ma bi anfusihim. That the, that whatever it is of our condition externally that we don't like and we wish could change, it will not change until we change what is inside of ourselves. And so what this does, subhanAllah, it actually brings the power back. Um, you know, you, the, the problem with thinking about, okay, what everybody else is doing wrong to me is that now I'm powerless because I can't change how other people treat me. I can't change other people, but there is something that I can change and that's myself. And so when I take back that you know the 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 power to change my circumstance the power to change my my situation i take back that power into my own hands in the sense of of course it is ultimately in the hands of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but this is where and i will talk about the dynamic of how do we get the help of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and 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 realizing that that now it's not, I'm not powerless anymore. It's not things are happening to me, but rather that I have a role and I have the ability to make changes internally that will make a change externally. And this is in, this is in every realm of my life, in my relationships, in my job, in my school, that when I make that change internally, I will see change externally. So then the question comes of how do we, um, you know, where does, first of all, where does change come from? And is change something as difficult as it looks like? And, and what I think the the important thing to understand about the dynamic of change is that, uh, it, it's, it's sort of like, I, I'd say that one of the best hadith to exemplify this, this concept is the hadith where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, hadith Qudsi that says that if, if my servant takes one step towards me, I take 10 steps towards him towards my servant and if my servant comes to me walking i come towards him with speed and and the you know the the concept of this hadith is extremely important and that is that there is basically two steps to this process of change the first step has to do with has to do with me has to do with an effort that i make that i am taking that step of doing of of some action of that i am taking that step towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but here's the key key element here that I want to really emphasize. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about one step from me and ten from him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about walking from me and running or with speed from him. So the two are not actually equal. And this is where we break down the deception that we talked about at the beginning of the show. And that is that when I see my goal as so, so far away, in fact, I see my goals, perhaps um, I look at it and I see that it's um, perhaps, suppose it's a million steps away or an infinite number of steps away. And so what I do as a result of seeing that is I say, well, I can't even start because it's too overwhelming. It's too far away. But here is, if we look at this this hadith, what we learn is that the, 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 the goal is actually not a million steps away. It's actually just one step away. And that's that first step that I make, that first sacrifice that I make, that first action that I make, the means that I take towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the rest of the way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make easy. And that is where, and this is the essential understanding that we have to have in terms of change. And this is where shaitan tries to get us, is to make the, the path look so difficult, to make the, the, the process of change look too hard so we don't even start. But what we need to do, and in this sort of inner dialogue and with, with our own nafs, is we need to realize that only the first step is ours, that only that first gesture towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that first uh, effort, that first step is ours. And after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will carry us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this, you know, he's in this hadith as well as in the Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever strives in our cause, we will guide them, we will guide that person to our way. So the first step is the striving. And that step is, yes, at first it's difficult. But once you take that first step, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides you for the rest of the way. And the rest of the journey after you take that first gesture towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the rest of the journey, you're not on your own. See, the, what makes things look so difficult is when we feel like it's all on us. 
when we feel like, um, you know, we're left to ourselves. And when we are left to ourselves, the burden is too difficult to carry. It's too heavy. But what happens when you make that step towards Allah and you take that first, and, and sometimes it involves a sacrifice that you have to make. Sometimes it involves, you know, that you are deciding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I want to make a change in my life. You know, maybe I have a hundred things in my life that I need to change. But I say, you know what, I can't, I can't do it on my own. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I am going to make this one small change for your sake. And you will find that if you do that, the hundred things will then become easier for you to change because now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be with you and you won't be taking that journey by yourself. So practically, how do we, I mean, how do we, how do we take something from this and practically apply it? Well, what we do is we look at our life and everybody, I mean, everybody knows that they, and everybody has something in their life or many things in their life that they wish could be different, that they wish they could change things perhaps about themselves that they wish maybe, maybe someone, um, you know, isn't praying regularly or maybe someone isn't, you know, has an issue with, um, with certain relationships which are displeasing to Allah, haram relationships with the opposite gender. Maybe it has to do with gender relations. Maybe it has to do with, um, you know, how they're interacting with, in their job or in their school, whatever it is. We all have struggles and we all have things that we really wish we could improve and we could change. And, and, and really what we can do practically is go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, admit our weakness, admit that we can't do it on our own. We can't make these changes on our own. But ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his help and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for his aid and for his guidance and to make it easy for you. And then choose something, anything that you can um, do for the sake of Allah as a gesture to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As if you're, you're saying, oh Allah, I'm going to do this thing for you. I know it's small. I know that I, I have a hundred things that I need to change. I can't do it. I can't do it all by myself, but I'm going to do this one thing and I'm going to do it and, and do it consciously with the intention, um, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you change the rest and, and make that effort. And, and, and after that, you will see a transformation that everything else will then become easier because you have taken that first step towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah inshallah will take you the rest of the way. So don't, don't let, um, you know, the idea that, that it's, there's too much. So where, how can I begin or where do I begin? Just begin somewhere and you'll find that the rest of the path will be unbelievably, um, you know, made easy. And, and I'll, I'll leave you inshallah with actually a personal story, um, that, that happened with, for me. And that is, um, when I was younger, uh, I basically came to a point in my own life where, um, you know, I, I grew up obviously in, in this country and, and I, I never went to Islamic schools. I, as, as a, you know, in middle school and everything, I went to, to public school. And so, um, you know, sometimes we, we just, we, we don't necessarily live the type of life that we want with the Islamic identity that we want. And, and I came to a point in my life where I had, where I made, a change where I took a different path and what it was that sparked that change in me was um, actually a promise that I made to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and, it, and it began, I had gone to like one of those youth camps actually. And while I was there, I mean, I think I, I went there with this very deep, sort of deep down desire to be different, the desire to sort of to, to be a devoted Muslim and to be different, you know, not just to be one of, one of the crowd, you know, and um, in the sense of, um, you know, my friends weren't Muslim, my, my, my company, I, I, I wasn't living the way I wanted to. And, and so what happened was when I, I went there with that deep intention, and when I was there, um, I decided that I wanted to make a change. And I was afraid that when I went back, you know, to my, to my home, that I would, you know, that that decision would just, I just go back to my regular life. And so what I did so that I would be compelled to stick with that, uh, that new path is I made a promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the promise that I made at that point um, in my life, and this was just before high school, actually, um, the promise that I made at that point was that I would never miss another prayer. Uh, because what happens when you start to, um, you know, when you're when you're a kid and you um, you start to like, 
you know, you, you're praying because your parents are telling you to pray. And then it sort of becomes like a habit, um, where not praying becomes a habit. So, so what, what I, the first, the first thing that I did was I made that promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's where I began is that I would never miss another prayer and, and that I would cut off with any, any type of, um, company that I had or any type of relationships that I had, which were not good for, for, for my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that were displeasing to Allah. So those were the two promises I made. And in fact, after that, I, I was able to do those things. And, and from then onward until today, um, and that was a long time ago, um, that, that it was a different path. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He paved that path. And it was because of, you know, just that, that gesture, that desire and that, and, and that action towards that, that way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took, you know, takes you the rest of the way.